What's up guys, it's Knight and today I got another game from the 2v2 league. This one is between two Russian teams. It is Foxrat versus Soviet Teapot on Sutton's Clutch. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the game by introducing our two teams, followed by the introduction of, of the players, of course, on the top of Open Palms. Well, I guess it is the top right. We have our team Fox Rat, of course, Fox Jamal and, and Vanity. And on the bottom left, we have the Soviet Teapot with, of course, Zadaika and Maxing. Let's go ahead and introduce our players and see what factions we are playing because it is a little bit surprising right off the bat. We have Vanity playing UEF, starting off with a double air factory, which I guess makes sense given these uh, this map and especially the spawn positions that we have for this league. Meanwhile, Zadaika is going to scout and his partner is Fox Jamal and spawning, of course, as the white Aeon. He's never gonna play anything different. Uh, or maybe I just challenged him. But nevertheless, he's doing something very interesting. He's starting off with triple research factory. I'm not quite sure I'll enjoy that. Seeing that their opponents have gone double air, double air. So very, very interesting. We have our purple and commander maxing. And of course you already know and see what he is doing with the double air factory and his partner Zadaika, the yellow UEF commander who is gonna go with a double air factory as well so let us see of course now is the time for our soviet teapot team to push their air and get a quick lead of course fox Vermillion realizes the threat here plopping down a double anti-air tower here to protect his base but unfortunately you know this isn't the best coverage i would have liked to see it if he's building two, I would have loved to see it a little more spread out, maybe put one right here. But of course, um, all of his engineers kind of went away by now and the commander needs to go to the front, but honestly, that's not the priority here, I don't think. I think your commander just needs to try and protect your base because there is something very interesting coming. We do have a transport incoming and there is there are rather engineers in that transport. And more air factories are coming up, of course. I think that's a very powerful follow-up. And more air factories from Zadaika as well. So very, very air heavy. And they really need to start capitalizing on this. And maybe they're just waiting for a little bit more of a critical mass or maybe for to see what impact this transport does. And it looks like Vanity actually picks up great map awareness. He is going to attack that, but not in time. To destroy this, he is going to take out the transport, but all the engineers do pop out, start to build immediately. Two land factories and two point defenses. And it looks like there is going to be electroshock as the response from Fox Tremelon. Very interesting choice because, of course, electroshock doesn't do too well against buildings. And that is what we've got here. Uh, if I was, I don't know, maxing. Well, he does sack cap, so that's kind of worth it, but he's losing an engineer here. But the real threat is this completed land factory, which now has shields, and Electroshock just does not do well against shields at all. We do have a land gantry, however, makes, making its way out for Fox Dermullen. Vanity is continuing to spam more air, but he's significantly outnumbered here, as both of his opponents have already at least four. Of course, Moxing has the five air factory here unfortunately though or fortunately i guess for fox rat these are not buildings so i'm not sure why moxing would go up to five air factories only to have them pause that's a little inefficient i would say but more probably the answer is this here the push with the <laughs> Five land factories here. A lot of mobile missile launchers making were the way. Ma Vanity is going to come out here and try to cover. Of course, Fox Tremelin's answer is always point defenses. But, you know, unfortunately, I don't think he always builds them at the right time or place. Like right here, they're completely useless, I think. And Electroshock is doing a little bit of damage. And Vanity is going to start, I think, capturing an engineer. Okay, so he captured an engineer here. Did he capture a... He, he must have captured that point defense as well. 
Moxing is not paying attention and that could be the end of this little expansion here. There was a lot of damage as air coming in here. There is an engagement with half of Vanity's army and that's not what you want to see from Vanity because he's already obviously outnumbered in the air. Well actually no. Because Moxing has stopped production for so long and actually Zodaika might have as well. We do see a disruptor station coming up also from Zodaika. Yeah so Somehow Vanity looks like he has more air than his opponent. And no, this base is going to survive. Vanity does have to retreat. There was a threat of a little snipe here. So he retreated to the lake and now he's going to retreat back. But we do have a pull and smash making its way out as well as a experimental gantry making its way for Fox Jamelin. And some naval factories getting queued up from Vanity with already a couple of destroyers making their way out. And there isn't really a good response here. There's only, um, let's see, four times uh, 50. 15 planes here and that's not going to be enough to really contest with these destroyers so they're going to get a lot of damage here and that is very very surprising turn of events because our Soviet teapot team has opened up with such a strong air opening which is very surprising but now they're transitioning into that very very late game and of course uh, they're going to sacrifice the mid game and you see the resonating effect of that meanwhile they were able to take this section out but they're going to start losing some of their base here good shields by Zadaika to protect this so that's the one good thing as the Urchma is going to engage here and this this base is officially going to die but not before Maxing managed to take out most of Fox Jamelin's base here and those were vetted mass extractors so that's pretty good mobile missile launchers are going to start firing on these factories well i guess it's not technically mobile missile launchers because they're ships but technically they are mobile so who knows more mastodons are going to make their way down here and i think this base is going to be forfeited unfortunately though there are four more disruptor stations back here that are going to get built actually five more and yeah, this is this is going to be quite a bit of damage here on our Soviet teapot team as there is now bomber transition from Vanity. And yeah, I almost forgot that Urchmas can, of course, go on the water. So there's going to be a little bit of a flanking maneuver. Let's see if our team has a radar anywhere here. There is actually no radar. There's a radar here which just got destroyed. There's a big air engagement here as the, this is a very good engagement for Vanity. Unfortunately, he does get outnumbered by two air players and even though he engaged over the air and unfortunately his bombers just completely die there too or fly through the air there. So even though he engaged over the Mastodons, that's really not or didn't give him the advantage he needed to win. And now this is looking a bit more dicier for our Foxrat team. Of course, they still got a bunch of these Mastodons, but now these disruptor stations are actually gonna start target firing these Mastodons. And of course, if they hit, they will freeze it. And that's the real power, especially when you have several disruptor stations. If you freeze the army, the other disruptor stations can, of course, get a lot of hits here. There's another engagement here with Vanity's Air Force, which just gets absolutely annihilated. And Fox Merlin is now starting to produce an insane amount of energy generators. Of course, it's not really to go teleport. I think it's more, I actually don't know why he needs so many energy generators, probably mass converter. Yes, he does have mass converter. So that is why he's building up so much energy. But the problem is, is there's so much artillery making its way out onto the field. There are a lot of energy generators as well. And unfortunately, these pull and smashes are just not going to do a whole lot here, especially when Maxing and Zadaika are really good about getting out of range of them and still doing a lot of damage. So wonderful movement by our teapot team. And it looks like a lot of engineers are going to start building here. Would like to start seeing a spam of shield generators here as well. This Urshma is unfortunately not going to get a whole lot done. As both of our commanders have made their way into the top left sea here to protect themselves. And Vanity's sea force is slowly going to get taken out. Oh, actually, he's going to... Foxman is going to bring his pawn smashes over here to protect. Of course, three pawn smashes can get quite a bit of damage done, but unfortunately, they walk into disruptor fire as the Daika has tr tried to support his teammate who is actually going to go into complete air spam as the Daika is going to transition back into air. And I think this is a... Uh, 
I think those are gunships. Yes, gunships are being built. AC-1Ks, of course, are good, but not on this map, I would say. As good, rather, because they're really good at sniping, and these commanders are underwater, so that's not going to happen. And there's a lot of shields, so it's not going to be too, too useful. I would love to see fortresses here, actually. I think fortresses are much better in this situation. They can just produce you know, gunships of their own, or they can produce bombers that are, I think, better in this situation. But nevertheless, I think it's hard to go wrong with AC-1Ks as well, that if micro properly can do a lot of damage. Also, these uh, pulling smashers, I don't know what they're doing here. They're actually walking into point defense fire. They're gonna do absolutely nothing <laughs> against the structures, and the disruptor stations can just fire on them. And of course, these uh, pulling smashers do have to unfold. That urch mob, by the way, gets annihilated by these bombs. They're just a lot of planes here, just a, a lot of planes here. And of course, as I was saying, these Urchmas or Pulling Smashes have to unpack and they're immobile, which makes them ideal targets from these disruptor stations. So I'm not sure what was going on there. There's a bunch of spam of naval factories coming up and I think it's a little too late for that because even if you manage to take hold of this sea, there's uh, a lot of space here that um, Zadaika can escape to, start building up his um, base back up again and it won't be a devastating loss so I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this progression by vanity of course he's managing to get a lot spammed here but he he will never be able to spam enough to le really take care of this hundred probably by now planes over here no I wish you could you could see how many how many units each player has that would be very very useful it's so a very nice radar over here positioned uh, that Vanity is going to try and take out, which he is actually going to manage to pick off. So decent movement by Vanity. Unfortunately, he's going to lose all of his naval factories. And this is why you really can't do this, especially clumping them up against artillery. It's just very, very hard to, to keep those intact. There is a lot of shield generators now from Fox Tremelin. There is a more opponent smashes coming up, which I'm not quite sure why he's making those. I guess still to protect the the base but I don't know I feel like maybe anti-air with shields is a little better at this point there is a space temple being queued up I'm not sure again why because he doesn't have any ground units really to be sending there's no universal colossus being uh, made out it looks like there is now disruptor fire onto the main base of Fox Dremelin. He did manage to get quite a bit of shields here, so I'm not really concerned, but there's still no higher tech. And why would you go Space Temple before Nuke? I think I feel like Nuke would have been very nice here, especially because, oh no, there is a uh, nuclear missile silo from Zodaika here, but nevertheless, they can't possibly cover this very quickly. Oh no, my goodness, Illuminator making its way. I have not seen this in a professional game yet, even in a team games. Uh, it's very curious uh, to see. I wonder, does this have some, what is it called, sonar? Because if so, then it could be quite useful actually because they could figure out where these commanders are and it basically has a whole map range. Looks like they have found Foxtremon. There is some nice ground fire here as there is a nice bombing run here, killing off Fox Jamalin, and of course Vanity has no chance to stand up for himself alone in this game, so he controls K. His very nice game, a very interesting game. Let's go ahead and see what game two was. Game two was played on Weddell Island, a map that's very familiar to us with Moxin going UEF, Sudaika also UEF, which is fairly common again. Foxtermon, his Aeon personification, of course, and Vanity, to surprise, going Cybran. Foxtermon's land forces finally make their way across the map, supported by Vanity's naval. Eventually, battleships make their way out, which do offer nice DPS, especially in these choke points. So our Soviet teapot team does manage to hold this initial onslaught, forcing Foxrat to back off. There are continued skirmishes in the center of the map until Soviet Teapot manages to amass a critical amount of gunships and battleships in which, at which point they really start to overpower their opponents even with them having battleships of their own, which eventually leads Soviet Teapot to push into Foxtrad's base, causing them to control K. 
2 to 0. So a teapot wins. If you are still watching, give a thumbs up to this video. If you like the video, leave a comment. If you love the video, please subscribe. And if you are blown away by it, check out my Patreon page. This has been Knight. Take care and peace out.